words. We know them well. Why do we cheat? You will hear from a doctor. You will hear from a psychologist, even a human lie detector. But let's start with what you just saw. Many of those cases involved sex. I want to bring in Gary Newman, who wrote the book. It's called The Truth About Cheating, Why Men Stray and What You Can Do to Prevent It. So, Gary, let me begin with you here. And, and reading all these stats and numbers and statistics, the one that jumped out at me, 60% of men are unfaithful. Why so many men? Well, first of all, a lot of men and a lot of women, 49, 39%, about 40% of women also are unfaithful. The reason that people cheat, believe it or not, is not sex. Only 7% of cheaters in my study said that they were sexually dissatisfied at home and therefore looking for it outside. Most of them were saying that it was about an emotional detachment that oh, they felt on. at home. Oh, come on. It's not sex? It is not. As a matter of fact, men who cheated said that 88% of the mistresses were not better looking or in better shape than their own wives. The fact is the concept of the one night stand represents only about 6 to 8% of the male cheaters that that happens. Most of it really is about this emotional connectedness. It's a mistake. It's highly inappropriate. But people are driven to feel connected to somebody and to have that freshness and that fun. And, and that illicitness obviously drives it up. Yeah. So when they lose it at home and they're disconnected and they're not nurturing the relationship, it's only too ample opportunity out there to find people to connect and hook up with. And they make the mistake of thinking that's real. You Gary, could cheat Gary, emotionally on Gary, your Gary, hang on. I, I have so many questions for you, but I want to bring in these two other guests who, who I'm sitting next to. We have uh, Dr. Paula Bloom, clinical psychologist here, and also Dr. Sanjay Dahl, assistant professor of neurosurgery at Emory University, because we have to talk about the brain. We have to talk about the brain, but Paula Bloom, let me, let me just ask you, because look, we're all guilty to a degree of cheating, whether we're cheating on ourselves, whether we're cheating someone else. Bottom line, why do we do it? Well, I mean, we're all guilty of doing it to some degree, okay? We all do a little bit of cheating, but we have to meet some sort of threshold. If we get beyond feeling like a bad person, we won't do it. Like, we kind of get to this little, little area. Why do we do it? I mean, we're talking about Lance Armstrong, uh, money, fame, winning. You know, the question so much isn't why we do it. We have a lot to gain. The question is, how could you do it? Come on, how, did you, how could you do that to us? But if, you, if, you, if there's not really fame, if you're just a regular... Just a regular person, not fame involved, there's no money involved. Perhaps you like the secret, you like the lie, you become addicted to the lie. Right, I mean, there is a little bit of a dopamine, a little kind of a pleasure thing that maybe we can talk about when we do, you know, kind of a little bit of adrenaline. But the point is, we want to believe things, and a lot of times we don't see, the world isn't as it is, is how we see it. We want to believe something's true. When you think something, it feels true. There is this cheating gene, and I know Gary can talk about that, but let me ask you, because I know that there's this brain scan, right, Sanjay? Yes. In which you can look at the brain, it's the frontal lobe, and you can tell the difference between what, if someone's lying versus not. Right. Well, there's, there's fascinating research going on right now, and it's still in the research phases, but it's using a technology called uh, magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, which is used very frequently, but it's a very specific kind of MRI called functional MRI that actually looks at the brain in real time and looks at metabolism of glucose within the brain and it tells us what parts of the brain are being used at any given second. And so using that research, they've, been, they've done experiments where they have had subjects lie while in the scanner and they see parts of the brain that light up that do not light up when they're telling the truth. And the, the basic concept behind this is that lying takes work. <laughs> it requires some effort, some calculation. It's much harder to lie than to tell the truth. But then for some people, it just seems to be so easy. And looking yes. at the brain, I'm wondering, could you be, are, can people be, are they born with uh, a certain aspect of the brain that perhaps would make them predisposed for, to lying? Or is it something that they learn along the way? There are some people who have some, certain mental illnesses that are known to be more adept at lying. It does seem to somehow correlate with intelligence because... For example, in, in some, sometimes in some of the patients I take care of who have a severe brain injury, they just don't lie at all. In fact, they're so blunt they get themselves in trouble <laughs> because they aren't capable of the complex calculations required to tell lies. Gary Newman, are you hearing this? Do you think if you are highly intelligent, you're smiling, if you are, the higher your intelligence level, what, the, the, the easier it is to lie, the more, the more instances of lying? Is that what you found? 
No, perhaps you, if you're very smart, you can feel that you can get away with it and you're uh. good at it. But the idea of presenting that we have a gene, listen, we have predispositions on all kinds of things. Perhaps for some people it's a little more of a struggle, but we have to be very careful to never justify or excuse. Obviously, people are very capable. What you have to remember about the Lance Armstrongs and the Arnolds and the, the Clintons and everybody is there's another phenomenon going on when you're talking about being that famous and that powerful, and that is that they walk walk around all day with people who are worshiping them. Everything they say, everybody says it's brilliant. Everything they, the little joke they make, oh, it's so laughable. All of a sudden, these people really do start to believe that own narcissism? story in their head. I'm sorry? Is it narcissism? That's the word that keeps popping into my head. Yeah, well, it is, and it's supported by the fact that you, when you walk around for enough time and enough years with everybody thinking that you're godlike, a person does begin to believe that everybody's going to love them no matter what. They can do no wrong because their handlers and the people that are immediately around them hmm. are always saying how excellent and unbelievable they are. Yeah. And unfortunately, human condition can only take so much of that before they, uh, many can turn into that. They're enablers. They're enablers. Uh, we're talking a lot about sex and relationships, but a lot of the cheating happens online. Take the story. Here it is. It's in the news today about this Notre Dame football player, this linebacker, Manti Teo, uh, the, the athletic director at Notre Dame, came out, says Teo uh, was this, this word, what's called catfished. It's this word uh, basically to describe someone being duped by a person posing in this case uh, as a girlfriend. Uh, this girlfriend supposedly died from leukemia as Teo and Notre Dame were battling uh, and marching on to, to that uh, BCS championship game. They lost the game, but along the way, Teo earned sympathy from people across the country, people on campus, as they saw him grieve for his girlfriend and his grandmother, who, by the way, he said, died the very same week. Here he was talking about his girlfriend. Before she passed, I don't know, it's kind of creepy, but she wrote letters for me before every game. This past, the... Stanford game was the last game that she wrote a letter for. And in every letter, she said, remember, be humble, be gracious, and always remember that I love you. The school is standing behind Teo, saying he was a victim of a sick hoax, is what they're saying, not part of the deception that had, quote, cruelty at its core. But the thing I am most sad of, sad about, is, sorry, that the single most trusting human being I've ever met will never be able to trust in the same way again in his life. Clearly someone cheated in this case. Hoaxes, cheating, they're even more commonplace now when you look at uh, what's happening online and on blogs. There's this whole MTV reality show. It's called Catfish, dedicated to people faking online relationships. Paula Bloom, let me go to you because as we were talking about this whole cheating, especially we started thinking, especially with this case, a lot of people now have this, like, it's like a dual per persona, right? You have this virtual person, you're either right. your best self or just a total fabrication of yourself, right. and then your real life. Right, and there's a continuum. I mean, there's a certain kind of disinhibition that happens online, a certain anonymity, things that you would not disclose to someone in person. You may disclose in that way, so then you have this kind of false sense of intimacy and connection, even if you've never met. I mean, there's a continuum. How many of us, I mean, I'm not guilty of this, of like, I don't know, having photographs from the right angle. Of course. And that maybe make you look, oh, Putting I don't know, a few picture pounds on Facebook. thinner, a few, few years younger. So, I mean, it's, it's all kind of on a continuum about kind of pre presenting this false sense to the world. We've all done this. I mean, this is something people have done for a long time, is kind of creating the sense that we put out to the world. Now there's so many avenues for it. Gary, there are still very much so questions as far as, you know, um, how if Manti Teo ever actually physically met this person, and if he didn't, as he says, and this was just a relationship, you know, over the phone or maybe over the web, doesn't common sense say, how, I mean, he said this was the love of his life. How, how do you explain that? It is remarkable, and it explains what we said in the beginning. People want to connect to others emotionally. I wrote a book called Emotional Infidelity explaining the phenomenon that you could be cheating on your spouse without having sex. We all get wrapped up in the sex, but that is really just often a further expression of people's Emotions. dire need to be emotionally connected and feel somebody gets them, somebody mm -hmm. understands them. And unfortunately, somebody who does give you that feeling can become very very manipulative and people can be weakened just by wanting somebody to really understand them at their core.
Okay, Gary Newman, Paula Bloom, Sanjay Dahl.